Hi there, and welcome to another edition of the AMN Archives Show, brought to you by the Austrian History Center. We have another great show for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa. Whoa, look at that. Wardrobe malfunction. Sorry about that. <laughs> Good job I'm wearing pasties today. Um, anyway, we have a great show for you with uh, Little Arts Poker Party number 230. Um, and that features Art Fine interviewing the legendary Doug Sarm and author journalist Ed Ward. So enjoy the show. <laughs> Okay, hi, I'm Art Fine. This is a little large poker. You turn things sideways a little bit so we can't see it. Um, all right, I'm Art Fine. Second show from Austin, Texas, with some groovy guests. First time in, no, second time in. Mats Olsen from Malmo, Malmo, Sweden. Originally from Malmo. Home of Hank Lee Burnett. No, Hank's. What's the province? Skåne, Skåne, what is it? The province. So he's an honorary Texan because he's. Uh, why is that? Because he's got a yeah. star in his hat like a Texan. He baseballed him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mets is a cool guy. He's sitting in today. He writes for uh, Swedish magazine Slits and some other things. Next to him we got Dick Blackwood. Dick. Hey. You're wearing the same clothes as the last time I saw you on I this know, show. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't left the it's, chair. it's been a week since we've seen you on television, but you're just the same. I just love it. Man. You're attached to that stuff. Yeah. That's real nice. Nice to see you, Dick. Next to him we got Ed Ward. Ed. Wow, what a group to see you. Yeah, well, welcome to Austin, Texas, Art. Uh, you know, really good that you uh, flew this whole uh, aggregation. Is that a uh, Communist Party insignia you got on well, there? Well, yeah, actually, we have gone communist. We'll <laughs> talk about that a little later. Oh, that's the Lone Star with the hammer and yeah, sickle on it. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. very good. <laughs> that's very nice. What, what is that from? Is that a, were you with uh, the it's, Communist it's Olympics or anything? No, I, I bought it in, um, in um, uh, West Berlin in a flea market because I thought it was real. <laughs> Yeah. And then somebody showed me on the back they've got a peace sign. So it's, it's made out of aluminum, too. Uh, I see. It's recycled beer cans. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Ed writes for the Austin Chronicle and That's many right. other things. Actually, you got something to plug, yes, don't you? I, yes, I am the author of this hard-to-find book. Down, rock, face it yes. forward yeah, and down yeah, a rock, rock of yeah. Ages, the yeah. uh, Rolling Stone History of Rock and Roll. I'm a co-author. is my name right there. Uh -huh. um, this book was never advertised, and I'm... Uh, here to tell you it makes a wonderful Christmas gift. Are we going to be in time for Christmas yeah, on the yeah, show? Yeah. yeah. It's a wonderful Christmas gift that's available at all those disgusting chain bookstores in the malls, and uh, as well as your fine little independent uh, I, bookstore. I think you're saying it hasn't been remaindered yet. It hasn't been remaindered yeah. yet, to the best of my knowledge. So now, you wrote uh, one through your, right, every third word, or is there certain edit articles? No, I, I, uh, <laughs> well, I, I did the first part, the best part. The, the, the early uh, stuff. The early stuff, yeah. It's my, my part basically Are you the eldest fellow on here? Are you what? the oldest guy on the? In the, in the I think uh, I'm actually the youngest of the uh, three authors, but um, but I'm the only one who could still remember the '60s. <laughs> the 50s. Well, it's good to have you here, and we're all 48. And we're, <laughs> Whatever. And, and we're all here, of course, because of honoring uh, Doug Sam. Doug, welcome to the hey, show. How you doing, Doug? Uh, Texas legend, the only Texas native, and certainly genuine legend huh? in in the room. Uh, well, it's nice. I didn't know I was going to be here tonight. Well, it's a pleasure. <laughs> See all this aggregation here. Uh, Matt's just coming to town. Well, it's sort of like you know, you come to Austin, you got to see Doug Sam. You playing this week at all? No, I had a real, like a lot of people, pretty frightening experience. You know, I'm a first-class baseball freak, and tonight I should have been at the World Series. Oh yeah. And, and tonight's only tonight forward all change. Tonight's only two nights after the earthquake. Yeah, and the Tuesday I was, I was supposed to leave this morning. Have you got a, Have you picked a side? Well, I like both teams. It's just that you know, when I go back to California, it's my second home. You know. Already kind of recycled my energy, and I you yeah. know, hope I can sit still for a while. I was already on this adrenaline because I see the TV the last couple of days, and man, it looks like it's pretty serious, you know. Yeah. I've got friends right now I can't even reach my yeah. phone. Yeah, don't, don't we all? Well, by the way, Ed, same thing. You've got yeah, lots of people in San Francisco. Yeah, well, I, I right? used to live out there. Most of the people I know had the good sense to move uh, years ago. <laughs> 
but there's still a couple of people I, I haven't been able to uh, to yeah. reach yeah. people who uh, yeah have got family and stuff. Well, speaking of LA, John yeah. Goddard. Anybody John Goddard. John oh Goddard. yeah, I have no idea. I haven't been able to get through. Yeah, John, he'd be a good person to have on the yeah. show. He's got the greatest record store you know, on the planet. Uh, I, I totally you know something? Agree. We yeah. we agree on that. I've never seen anything better than Village Music in Mill Valley, California. Yep. It's it's just yeah. posters of Johnny Ace. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, his his own autograph book with Jimmy Reed and people like that. He could it. buy J Johnny Ace's cadaver. He probably wouldn't <laughs> put well, it on. Let's that take way. it easy. Now. No, I mean yeah. John's a collector. What can I say? We did a we did a <laughs> thing for him. I don't know if you saw you back when me and Flacco played with the Anton Review in uh, January, when the new record came out. We did a record party over there. You did. And it's incredible. These uh, Chicanos come up from uh, San Jose. And Flocko's like Elvis. I call him Elvis. Yeah. Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Elvis is here. You know, he's taking pictures. Yeah. Will you post them up with my wife? You know, yeah. it's great, man. man. The guy really put on a wing ding. We had great food. We brought in Cajun food. Did you, everybody's ever in Mill Valley. I think they should. Did you Did you hear about his uh, his uh, anniversary party this year? He oh, had yeah. Elvis yeah. Costello yeah. and uh, oh, and uh, yeah, Jerry Garcia and uh, James Burton and, and Sammy Lowe. Hagar. And Commander Cody all on stage at the same time playing together. That's what it was that's really right. stupid. It I mean, was this correct. sounds like a long plug for, for, for Village Music, but we okay. like the place, and it's yes. Mill Valley is just north. You of don't San have Francisco. to shop there, folks. It's yeah, don't buy anything. Just go in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a museum, really. Oh, Mill Valley's okay. You know. yeah. Well, you know, a retired like rock, retired rock stars up there. Yeah, oh, lots of. Yeah. Uh, speaking of LA, now you were in the movie. What was the movie? What was the Chris Christopherson Cisco movie? Pike. Cisco, Cisco Pike. Pike. With a friend of his. Uh, Ed, uh, and mine, Bill yeah, Norton. Bill Norton. I worked for Bill last year, two years ago on the movie, on the TV series Tour of yeah, Duty. Yeah, that was a great right. movie. And also, uh, you know, a dear friend of mine out of that, still one of my dear friends, Larry Dean Stanton. Is that right? Did you see yeah. him when he played here, anybody? Uh, he, he played the cactus? He, right. Great. He played down in when the he LA. He did great, too. Made cracking jokes. And one of the true, I think, underground heroes of America today. You know the guy's face. You see Larry Dean Stanton. You know, and I looked up, and he's in that new uh, FBI movie, that oh, one that's on Channel 11. Huh. He plays like uh, John Dillon Dillinger's sidekick. You know, like wow. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 I saw that. My one. favorite movie he did was Straight Time. Oh, man. So Paris, Texas. And Paris, Texas. Yeah. Was well, you know, he, he plays shot. with us. He comes out and sings the Spanish thing from that movie, that song. He oh, did. yeah. It's really pretty. Remember me and Flacco there? We get him to come on up. And huh. So I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you this question. It's always like, on my mind because Huey Mo told me this. Oh, now you know you gotta you gotta. So you know it's the truth, right? What you ask you? An eighth of it is true, but <laughs> this is the, the story about when when he hears when the Beatles came out and he goes into the motel room with a with a bottle of beam or something like that, plays them over and over. Comes Thunderbird. Up to you, Thunderbird. There you well, go. And me. says like you're now Sir Doug, and then they do the the album in silhouette, so they can't. Tell yeah, you're talking you in shorthand here, but well, you're I'm saying just trying to trying to say that's the story I heard. I just wanted to that he heard that Huey explain this to people that don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's a little... a certain segment that does know. Not yeah, that's I want to know... Doug Psalm Saga, you either know or you don't Saga, know. I want to know if that's true <laughs> or not, because I, I got it from Huey Moe, which is like, you know, in the West, print the legend. Well, he know. did come down. Huey used to hold court. See, when... Great part about it, during that area, you know, of me and Sonny Ozuna, all this thing was started. Mm -hmm. We were punk kids, you know, I admit it. We were energetic little kids trying to make it. So he was already having hits, so if you were going to have a national hit, he had to go to Huey, you know, because uh -huh. Huey called the shots in them days. I mean, Literally was the king of the don't land. And what time was this? Six, well, this was late 50s, early 60s. And where was it? Houston? Well, he, he, he held court in Winnie, Texas. Yeah, he was a Winnie? barber. Winnie? down between the, Beaumont and Port the, Arthur. The rice capital of Texas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he would hold court down there, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, At the barber shop? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, well, back to that thing. He would come into town and hold court, and that was an idea. He, he was really trying to pick up on something that would hit the British invasion. Yeah. But in all fairness to that Sir Douglas Quintet bit, it did. We were good players, and we did have something to say at that point. We oh were yeah. Young and energetic, and it worked really great. And people asked me all the time. I just did this great show in New York up there at the Columbia University and Radio. A good friend was just talking about Ben, and uh, that is a pretty story. It sounds like it's jive, but it's kind of true in a way. Really? The Sir Douglas bit was kind of uh, something to sound English that we both kind of came up with. You know? But you'd been pestering him to make a yeah, record. Yeah, he was saying, yeah, nah, yeah, go away, yeah, kid, yeah, right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and the great part was when he would, uh, he used to have his little 45 boxes by the, uh, when he's cutting hair. Yeah. Doing his <laughs> pre <-beat laughs> And the hair would fall into the boxes. <laughs> and he'd go, hey, kid, this is what you got to sound like. This is a Louisiana sound. <laughs> so he'd dig a hair, and he'd blow the hair off of the little thing and dust the hair out of the boots. And give you the records, and I'd come back in six months. <laughs> you can sound this way. <laughs> 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 
That's true. <laughs> but you had two APMO. You had records out as a little kid too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, eleven. Was that? Well, little Doug, yeah. right? Sorry, what Charlie Fitch out of Luling. He's still alive. Yeah. yeah. That's a great thing. Go down to Luling, Texas. Uh huh. Next and to the chicken processing yeah, plant. Yeah. But the barbecue, you go to the city market. Right. Yeah. One of the greatest barbecue, and you wring the sausage out. Yeah, get the greatest sausage. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. You wring it out. You know that great German sausage? You got to do that. Just wring it out there. And then you eat, and you have a few beers, and you stroll out and see Charlie there. You know? <laughs> He's got his old, and there, it looks like 1952. It hasn't changed. It's got old juice boxes. It's got old Sarge records with uh, the moods. Yeah. Right. And all these bands. And right. Yeah. It's amazing how the Europeans come here. They're all coming here for the show this weekend. And they yeah. really relish those old. You know, collector records like that. They're not into, you know. I don't think sometimes that Americans have turned their back on the real thing. Like they're really into that old stick, you know, which is, you know. Uh -huh. Right. And the American collectors are all looking for David Bowie records. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a joke about it in Austin. You know, Kono, how great Kono is, and, and only there's Golly G or Why 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 up here. Yeah. It's, it's China Girl. You know, right. It's kind of different to the level. Uh -huh. of what's an oldie and what ain't? You know. Yeah. <laughs> but San Antonio has that lore about it. It has an old market. You know, that old. 45-year-old ex pachucos going out and dancing slow to Gali G, huh. you know. Just like East L.A. Oh, yeah, East L.A. has some of it, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rochelle, the candles. Well, we were driving down to San Antonio today. We had the oldie station on, and, and we heard put, put Me in Jail yeah. by Sunny in the Sunlight. You're not going to hear that on any seen. other radio station. <laughs> <laughs> have, you ever, have you been to the, ever met the guys that run that station? No, uh-uh. No. There's something else. You ought to get him up here. Yeah, Lee Woods. I mean, and they're hardcore dedicated to preserving the West Side sound because it means something. So West Side refers to the West Side of San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. Right. but it, you know it's like a little barrier. We call it the West Side, the zone, mm -hmm. somewhere in between San Marcos and New Braunfels. It changes, you know, because mm -hmm. the two towns, you know, the people who live here know it are quite different. You know, uh, Austin has, you know, got a very large older hippie armadillo <laughs> so creek population, but it also, <laughs> also has these young punks around with spikes. You know, it's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> it's Austin, but down there it's pretty hardcore. I mean, purple hair is a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and these cats will let you know they don't like it. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I think, I think, you know, it's funny after you do all these years, everything has its place. You know, I don't, I used to, you know, when you're young, I think, people, ah, I like this, I don't like this. And yeah. Down on this and down. I mean, even stories like right now across the street, that baseball field, we yeah. had a riot over there, man. So I used to have these problems with umpires. And <laughs> man, there was a riot over there. They call the cops. Well, what do you mean? Well, a baseball, baseball right? field right across the street. Yeah. yeah. It used to be part of the parks there. And today, I, old memories come up. Wait, yeah. there was a hippie riot or there was a. No, no, me and the umpires. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy and fights and happens. Oh, man. I mean, this was like. These are two. There was Serious a, softball. There was a day here in Austin in the mid 70s when uh, <laughs> you played baseball on Monday, Tuesday night, the Culver's played with Stevie, and, and then, you know, we played on the weekends, you know. And man, it was a scene. I mean, it, that's a big difference I noticed now in Austin. It like used to go every night, you know, at 12 o'clock closing. Uh -huh. Tuesday was no different than Sunday. Now you, you look around, I mean, you go out on Sunday night at midnight, there's nobody. And you go down to, you know, to 6th Street on a Friday and Saturday, you can't move, you know. And mm -hmm. they're not necessarily my, our people are like, you know, <laughs> kind of, wow, let's go to 6th Street, you know. <laughs> I go there to see my kids every now and then. You know, I got two boys in heavy metal bands. Is that right? Oh, really? <laughs> what bands are those? Go see the chicks around that scene. <laughs> was, I've been thinking about going that way myself. <laughs> this is a in town. You better start growing your hair, brother. You I better, better start, start buying some of them in They all look like MTV. You know, it's yeah. great. Little chicks all MTV'd out, man. They're, you know, 18, they look 25. So this, they're each in a different local band? Yeah, Sean is in a band called Presence. Uh huh. And my youngest son's in a band called Pariah. They're Pariah. They're, yeah, they're doing real good here. They're like on the move. They're gonna get a deal. Looks like uh, they're managed uh, by uh, Wayne Nagel and uh, oh. and uh, the guys that used to manage uh, Omar and the Howlers. Uh huh. Uh, Womack boys. Uh huh. Yeah, it's kind of interesting watching the generation come up. You know, they're just they're totally guns and roses out. You know? Yeah, totally mm -hmm. everybody. Guns and roses. Axel was king. And huh. So your kids have tattoos? No, he hasn't got that far yet. Oh. So. He's not going to get signed until he gets a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> he showed me the other day, though, he's got a drum. He's got a fan in the back that automatically blows his hair out forward. They've got a fan where his hair sticks out the ear. Great. What a trip. Yeah. Well, whatever happens to that Father and Son record, you're going to do Father and Son, too. Well, we'll, 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 we'll probably get around to it. Yeah, oh, Father and Son's record? Yeah, we do like a... Sir Douglas Quintet meets heavy metal or something. That'd be great. Yeah. I showed my young boys, man, the youngest one, how to do uh, You're Gonna Miss Me, mm. Rocky huh. Erickson song. Uh -huh. yeah. So now they, you know, it's like an education to the young kids. You know, I think Rocky's the greatest, and like other people in Austin, you know. 
think the young generation needs to know about the elevators. We just finished a tour in the Midwest, me and Augie and Rocky. And Rocky, yeah. And we do, uh, no, Rocky Morales. Morales. But oh. We really laid into a lot of that, you know, Rocky Erickson stuff and, you know. Wow. Then with my new jukebox music, we are really pushing it. To God, that Walker. jukebox, it's a great album. Thank really you. a good album. It, I mean, uh, Very proud of it. I shouldn't sound surprised. I mean, I love it, but it's just, just great, you know. Well, I got, you know what's weird? All these, some guys got one record out of two. I've got three or four records. I like the one he just did the liners on. I mean, that's, it's, a, it's an import, but it's an incredible, in-depth, you know, Doug Tom saga, you know, and it's just really well done. So know? it's a history of? Yeah, it's a, it's a anthology of the Mercury stuff that uh, uh, Demon, uh, records and put out in Britain. Oh, so in other words, Mercury hasn't figured that out yet. Oh, no, no. They're no. going to. They, they say they're going to put something out next year. Yeah, in about 100 years. They better not use my liner notes again without paying, though. There you uh, go. Okay, well, uh, you know, right. Right. <laughs> right. Just about everything you've ever cut there from the early days is now available, isn't it? I mean, well, they, there was import. so much thing to bring it back. There is a thing about that sound we had, you know, uh -huh. that a lot of people try to copy. And, you know, it's really weird because you won't, just wouldn't believe it. Like, we just played Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis. We had 600 people on a Tuesday night in Minneapolis in a club, you know, and things like that. All these playing that, and it just, then we do the polka bit, you know, yeah. it's, it's just, I don't know, man, it's, when you're inside of it, you know, but the funny thing, you know, I love, we'd walk in the club, man, you know, Augie, you know, that's Augie Myers, right, you know, nobody in the world looks like Augie, and we walk in the club, and they go, it's them, it's them, it's really them, right, you, wow. is this going to be a phony Sir Douglas Quintet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, they just kind of in a trance until we go up there and start playing, she's about a mover. Wow. It's really incredible. That's terrific. Are there any phony Sir Douglas Quintet there? Were. Out there? Oh, there, oh, there were. were. Yeah. I met a few guys who were portraying us. Yeah. Wow. You know you've made it. You know, yeah, right. Get phonies. <laughs> See, a great story uh, a lot of people that don't know about Matt. See, Matt's, is, you know, me and all these you know, greatest friends in the whole world. And he's the one that pretty single-handedly broke us. You know, we got really huge in Scandinavia in the early 80s, which a lot of people don't know here, but we got just, you know, hit after hit after hit. And he was the guy that kind of, Actually did it. Well, that's right. He's writing for Express. Yeah. The biggest. Yeah. Uh, so we started touring and television clicked and we came up with a song called Meet Me in Stockholm that, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Doug Clifford, Credence was on, yeah. played drums on. And it's one era, see, that a lot of people never even heard here and it was released in the States. It's, huh. it's weird. You know, these collectors all dig my old stuff up and then some of the people on the kind of mainstream, they go, well, yeah, I remember some of the hits, but it's kind of interesting, you know, because all it really is is just, you know, get national exposure. Was, was there a couple of things from Austin? Was it was Doug? The, Doug was certainly the biggest thing to hit Sweden. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I think that's the only thing. Actually. It was. Yeah. For uh, tell them about that era. It was just a country era that happened. Yeah. Well, it was really strange as well because Sweden is very low key and people, especially. I mean, th that was a rock audience are very very active and so on. But uh, middle aged people, when, when Doug played a couple of times, the middle aged people were, I mean, they were screaming crazy, <laughs> like it was you know Beatles in the fifties or something. It was amazing. And what that played was just West Side Sound. And rock and roll out on sax and, and accordion and all these. I mean, it was amazing. I never thought that could actually happen. Yeah, it's just we had to have good guards up there. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Me, yeah. me in Stockholm, it just knock us down. And, you know. Spe especially about no Norway, Trondheim, yeah. wasn't it? Like it's five, six years ago, they, they had to bring out the riots. Yeah, 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 we actually had riots. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people in Austin don't know that, but I'm pretty what? proud of that. Yeah, we had. And it's really weird because at that 83 tour, I remember I had an ingrown toe. And it was so bad, I had to play barefooted. I don't know if you ever had an ingrown toe, but the thought of some big giant Swede stepping on your foot. You know? <laughs> and, and we actually posted guards at the front, you know, and I'd go this, meet me in Stockholm, and they just, just Swedish chicks would go nuts, <laughs> knock over those guys, knock me down, you know. I never get one out, it's flat on my back. We had got our gold records that night. He was there, it was a big occasion. And they presented our gold, you know, gold Swedish records that night. I think it was 84, and... Uh, and I started that song, and we had been drinking much of wine, eating. Our good friend, his good buddy, is uh, uh, from uh, the Baldy Keenan's, uh, was there, and uh, Leonard Carlson. Carlson. Yeah, right. and uh, man, it was just too much. I was flat on my back, and all I remember was looking up and seeing bodies flying off. You know, like I was flat on my back. You know. All I saw was bodies. My roadies had people were just like flinging them. And Matt, is that the way gold records are usually given out in Sweden? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, it was a weird situation. See, this country thing hit there. There's another good friend of his from where he's from, named Hossie Anderson, uh -huh. who had a song, what was it, Uncle Hoon? Why don't you yeah. kind of translate a little of that in Sweden? Well, well, it, yeah. it was all about, can I bring the dog, when I go to heaven, when I yeah. die, can I bring my dog? Which was sort of like, uh, very, it's, it's a good song. Yeah, it's it very was. heavily dug song. It's, it's, uh, 
Everybody, everybody would sing along. Uncle Who. Now, sing along was a big deal over there. Yeah. Sing along was a big deal. You'd get in that one club and they'd do, hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Done quite. Well, you know, a bunch of drunk sweets singing that. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy to see that. Man, that's terrific. Yeah. That's why when I see him, all that comes back to me because that's one of my, you know, I can say my best love. It was really great about what a year ago his folks, he brought his folks here. They always want to come to Austin, Austin, right? Yeah. Austin, San Antonio. We're down in San Antonio at dinner, me and him and all, you know, crew. And yeah. yeah, he's one of our real compadres, man. I got a lot of friends in this business. I'm a lot of people, a lot of people in LA know about you. They all are Yeah, it's, it's a worldwide thing. It isn't, you know, see, it's really strange. I don't people understand when I'm in Austin, I live in Austin a lot. I'm out, you know, my house, watch TV, cat, feet, you know, I live. And there's so many people now, young people trying to make it that there's just almost so much room, you know what I mean? Like columns that everybody's fighting, well, come on in, do this, and come on, do that, you know. So for a while, I just kind of sat down and just didn't do much until I, you know, played a gig or something. Mm -hmm. So this year when the Anton record came out, I kind of come back up, surfaced up a little bit, you know, because I love living here, I really do. I mean, Have you uh, played L.A.? Not, well, is this year you played one? Yeah, I played with Flacco. Yeah. January with Palomino, uh -huh. that was a huge gig. Harry Dean was there. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, it came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, Bonnie Bramlett, uh -huh. man, and the guy from Los Lobos, Caesar. Uh -huh. So stage, yeah, stage ended with all the people on stage at one time. <laughs> and then next week they came, and that's when the fire marshal closed it and put Ely out in the parking lot. And everybody oh, yeah, the Ely show, right. Uh, yeah, they get a little strange there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about Cisco Pike going way back? How did you get into that one? It was 1971, wasn't it? Somebody. Uh, later than that. Was it 71 that came out, wasn't it? I thought it was 71, 72. Maybe well, 70, 71. 71. That yeah. sounds about right okay. to me. Well, somebody had told Norton about us or something, and we had an agent out there, because uh -huh. we were kind of plugged in, I'd say, at that point. And, uh, and I always get these roles of the fast-talking hippie. Yeah, cats. yeah. <laughs> Just take Wonder me why. <laughs> Jack. Wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really fun in American Graffiti, too. I got to do that driving, you know, that driving scene. Yeah, right. And there was a union guy sitting around, and I got to do the driving. <laughs> you go like count three, hit the fire plug. Bobby went to his trash can. And what's great out of that, a lot of lasting friends come out. Scott Glenn, who went on to be a oh, yeah. Years, and, uh, Scotty Glenn. And I was the only musician. The rest of them were actors. Uh -huh. And it was quite a experience. I'm probably ready for another movie after that. I don't know which one. Is the album, right. that, uh, the album that Dylan was on with you, is that still in print, the Atlantic record? Yeah, Ansel has it out. Yeah, that's, yeah, out, that's also out in England. England. Yeah. It's not available in the U.S. Yeah, that was a real big deal in about 73, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I just moved here. I was one of the only guys that had a major deal. And Bob Dylan would come to town. We'd run around town. And, and it was a scene, man. That's why it's, you know, again, like people that already have just came here, there's a whole group of us old-timers kind of still a little hung up in the past, you know, whether good or bad. They can make their own opinions about it. But, you know, we're in the deal on the Soap Creek, and there was no 6th Street, and there was a split rail up the street, you know. It was a great time to be here. It was still kind of undiscovered, you know. Well, you said you moved here in 73 and thereabouts. Yeah, 73. Where were you from, coming from, San Antonio? Well, at that point, I'd been everywhere, man. I'd been in California to 70. Mm -hmm. I think one of the main things that people forget is that when the Haight-Ashbury was over in like 1970, when it went from total fun into a pretty chaotic situation, the uh, Austin was just happening. Mm -hmm. So people from Cleveland and Boulder and whatever had no place to There was nothing happening but here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's the thing people forget. And then they... Just, you know, got cowboy hats, and we're still hippies. Yeah. Got some boots, started drinking long necks, and <laughs> Cosmic Cowboy was born, you know? Right. Well, uh, excuse me. Still, oh. Just excuse me. Somebody go out and find out how many minutes we got left, will you? Because I'm, I'm not sure what we're counting here. Do you, yeah, go on. Do you know uh, or keep up with any people like we're on Cobra and all those guys? You must have played with them in the club. Who, who's Like that? Sunny Ace and Oh, yeah. All those yeah, Sunny guys. Ace actually works at Kelly Field now. You know, that's really? what we call the big leagues in San Antonio. Wow. Does any do they do those guys still play around? Yeah, they do. Kono, the, the station you heard, uh -huh. they do all these gigs all the time. Wow. They're bringing in Gene Thomas. Uh -huh. Sometimes I cry. Uh, yeah. He's still around. Yeah. Only you. I saw Roy Head the other day. He was in town. Yeah, he lives in San Marcos, doesn't yeah. he? No, he's actually living on the river down in somewhere around Houston. He's got a place on the river, but look great. Since they can still do the back over flip, I hear so. <laughs> guy can actually do maracas and does a back over flip. It's <laughs> All the old Texans are hanging in there, man. I don't know, Flacco is doing great. We've been going out this year a lot with Flacco, taking the Anton Review, playing the rhythm and blues, and Flacco comes on and does the blues. The biggest one, I'll put in the plug now, the really going to be happening. We play Slims a lot. Boss Cags is a club out there. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're it's playing. still standing. Still standing. Yeah, it is. Well, we don't know. Today Nobody is. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, on the 15th and 16th of December, we're going to have me and Augie. Sir Douglas Quintet with Flacco and Freddie Fender. Wow. One gig. 
Wow. What's Freddie been doing? Freddie was here Monday. We did a record with Towns Van Zandt. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh, Ruben Ramos' band, yeah. Freddie Fender, me and Augie, and Towns Van Zandt. Yeah, it's a killer. You ought to hear Poncho and Lefty in Spanish. It's great, man. Oh, man. That you know, sounds great. Poncho and Lefty got it. Freddie Fender has got a voice. I mean, she like sure does. Completely in shock. Why, why did he disappear for so long? Well, well you know, Freddie has been up and down. Freddie had a real tragedy here about a month ago, a month and a half. He lost his mother and his son in the same week. Oh. And that guy, I've never known anyone to ever go through. You know, he's a star, went to prison for nothing, right. came back, went through the store all the way down again. And the guy is better than ever, 52 years old and just kicking. Man, he's, uh, I mean, when he sings in that studio, everybody stopped. Yeah. You would always stand and go, man, listen to that. And when you hear that unique voice that he's got, you know. And he was really yeah. good in the movie, too. Oh, he's Did you see that movie? Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah, yeah, I, I, saw, I, saw, I was watching the movie, I say, I think that a guy looks, it looks just like Freddie yeah. Fender. <laughs> it is Freddie Fender. Uh, it looked just like Freddie Fender, except he looked too young and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, it was he's him. Healthy. Yeah. yeah healthy. I mean, the guy was terrific. It's funny, you know, all the older guys are totally clean now. You know, yeah. Like, you know. huh. Cleveland says that Rook Erickson doesn't go out anymore? Or he, he stays home a lot. But you know, you know how he is in Europe. He would be such a monster in Europe. Mm -hmm. Rocky could get over and play. I mm -hmm. just wish he could. I know the out. first time I came here, you took me to his house yeah. so on yeah. that trip, and he didn't come out. We just yeah. ended up banging yeah. on the doors. And yeah. you said, he's in there. He's in there. He just doesn't want to come out. <laughs> yeah, I really want to go into that. But he, he's more one of the American. Yeah. Yeah. What have you done in town, Matt, since you've been here? What have, what's, what have you been up to? Trying to get home to you. <laughs> well, you know, well, that could take a week, I know. Well, you know, on that note, we're going to close because that 10 minutes that you stayed lasted a half yeah. hour. I really, really appreciate <laughs> it. Really appreciate it. Nice Very seeing you again. Well, well, thanks a lot good. for dropping by. Sure glad Matt's is here. All right. All right, fine. Real happy guy from Austin, Texas. Thank you. See you again. Chucky Weiss should be coming up any second. Da -da 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 oh, they're going to do uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I see why they're always sitting around at the end of your show. Yeah. Whether it's on. <laughs> Wondering when it ended. <laughs> or if it ended. But well, they're going to append the polka band. They're going to append the polka band. Where's the polka band? Man, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's really really uh, really <laughs> pretty hard to move. It's real hard to move. It's 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 hard to move. Because I make myself known. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it really turns around. We love to watch. Well, it's a morning fun. Just want to meet some people and have some fun. Meet some people and have some fun. And the man turns the phone call. The police is just little if you need some trouble to eat. That's the kind of girl. And that was the late great Doug Sam there on Little Art's Polka Party that was taped in Austin in 1989. I'll be digging out more Doug Sam materials from the archive for future shows. And I have one more little uh, Doug Sam thing for you right now, and that is the Sir Douglas Quintet from 1981, Down on the Border.
classic video there from 1981, the Sir Douglas Quintet. And as you may have heard earlier in the program, the band were actually, the name was to sound like an English band uh, to counter the British invasion that was happening at that time. Speaking of which, it's the 40th anniversary of the British invasion. So I thought I'd do a little show and tell and show you uh, the program for when I went to see the Beatles in 1962. This is pretty cool, eh? My sister actually uh, got us in free because she was working with one of the bands. She was a hairdresser. And uh, this band, the Lanas, that were on the bill, she was doing their hair, so she got free tickets. So pretty much on the guest list for the Beatles. Can't beat that, eh? Eat your heart out, Jody Denberg. And back to rock history. Here is the book that Ed Ward spoke about earlier in, on in the show. He wrote the section on the 50s and the fall, which is real interesting stuff. And you can find this book in the collections of the Austin History Center and uh, with several other music-related books. So come on down and see us at 810 Guadalupe. What's next? Oh, yeah, happy anniversary to the Cactus Cafe. We celebrate 25 years of great music this month. You may have seen the cover story in The Excellent recently. And in honor of this anniversary, we're going to play some Darden Smith, a video from 1988. Darden has played many a gig at the Cactus Cafe, so enjoy this one. Run around, just taking the chase all over this town. That's why I'm gonna disappear to Kansas City. Because a man on a highway has got a shotgun, he's got me on his mind.
Charles Darden Smith there, of course, from his 1988 video. Now let's go to Tito and Tarantula, and this is from the Robert Rodriguez film, Dusk Till Dawn. That was White Snake there. No, actually, it was Tito and Tarantula from uh, the Robert Rodriguez film Dusk Till Dawn. Local filmmaker extraordinaire there. Um, Tito and Tarantula recently played at Antones with Del Castillo and Robert Rodriguez himself, in fact, last week. And he was sh shooting that on high definition video. So uh, look for that to come out soon, or sometime anyway. And uh, that was a show at Antones to promote his. Uh, DVD release of Once Upon a Time in Mexico, and Del Castillo's DVD release, their live concert. We'll hear more from them in another show. And now it's time to tell you about something I'm really excited about, a poster exhibit that's happening at the Austin History Center. 
uh, the Austin History Center along with the Austin History Center Association and APES, which is Austin Poster Enthusiast Society, is putting on an exhibit entitled Artists Among Us, Poster Art in Austin. And this will primarily consist of posters over the last five decades. Um, Austin Poster Art, uh, which in fact has been going for quite a considerable time. In fact, since the city started. Um, we're real excited about that. And uh, there is a selection of posters from all the artists that have donated posters to the Austin History Center. And if the Austin History Center does not have your poster and you're a poster artist, then the only reason we don't is because you haven't brought one in for us. So 810 Guadalupe is the address. Bring us in your posters. We'd love to have them in the collection. And uh, hopefully you'll make it in the poster exhibit, if not this year, then the following year, I would imagine. Uh, one of the artists who is, uh, has donated several posters to us is Jared Connor. And uh, he's one of the contemporary artists who's done a lot of work here in town with many of the clubs, um, La Zona Rosa, Room 710, Stubbs, uh, worked with lots of local bands and often produces posters for bands out of town and for bands doing gigs in Europe. So his work is widely distributed. Um, his stuff will be there and many, many others. If you want to see more of his materials, many, many other artists, I should say. Uh, if you want to see more of his materials, you can go to MexicanChocolateDesign.com or if you want to find out more about local posters, go to GigPosters.com. Excuse me. <coughs> um, and with that in mind, um, I want to give you a little bit of history um, about posters, which uh, one thing is we're also excited about is, is there's a book coming out on poster art in Austin. And uh, the person doing on all the research on that is Bill Narum, one of the well-known artists from the Armadillo era and a great artist in, in many fields. Um, and he actually will probably be the guest speaker at uh, a special opening of the exhibit. So I'll give you more information on that. But in some of Bill's research, it's turned up that uh, when President Lamar, who was a printer, actually, uh, when he selected uh, this site for the capital, uh, he sent Walla to build the town and to feed and entertain the, the soldiers. Bullock opened a tavern on 6th and Congress. And to get a jump on state printing work, they actually opened a printing press. And Joel Miner was the first poster artist in Austin. And he set up a print shop next to Bullock in 1839 a few months before people even really started coming here as a city or as a small town then. So that is pretty fantastic history and uh, which basically amounts to the fact that we, that in 1939, Austin had a printing press, had poster artists putting out stuff and had a live music venue. So uh, that's pretty amazing stuff there. So actually this year is the hundred and fifth anniversary of poster art in Austin. And now it's time for the Spotlight. And this week we feature Jimmy Valentine Sings, a CD collection of Jimmy's recordings from the early 40s. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I spend a lonely night dreaming of a song. The melody haunts my reverie, and I am once again with you when our love was new. And each kiss an inspiration Oh, that was love 
long ago Now my consolation Is in the stardust melody Beside a garden wall When stars were bright You were in my arms The nightingale tells its fairy tale Of paradise where roses grew Though I dream in vain Always in my heart You will remain Stardust melody The memory of love's refrain Jimmy recorded with many big bands during the 40s, during the Second World War, and he has quite an amazing voice. The CD also contains an oral history of Jimmy talking about how he got from Austin to New York and his introduction to the music business. How did I happen to be singing with a band in New York City? Short version, sang Stardust with Jimmy Darcy's band at my fraternity's big dance at University of Texas. McKinley was on drums, Freddie Slack's on piano. Later they were recruited to its first band by the William Morris Agency. McKinley as co-leader with Will Bradley, a top-rated trombonist. After a period of several months' discussion, they took a chance on me and sent me a train ticket, the first time I'd ever been on a Pullman. It's mid-March, 1940, the second day of my train trip to join the Bradley Band in New York City. Out the window, I could see the broad Hudson River, containing what appeared to be large, dirty, gray concrete blocks. The porter said, why, those are ice blocks. Since I'd been speedboating and swimming on Lake Austin two days before, I could sense that things would indeed be different in New York. I guess it was about 10 a.m. when my cab dropped me off at the Piccadilly Hotel, just west of Broadway on 45th Street. The desk clerk said that Mr. McKinley was not taking phone calls. So I went into the connecting drug store for breakfast. The waiter asked, what do you want? Well, I'd like orange juice, whole wheat toast, two scrambled eggs with bacon, and coffee. He looked at me quizzically. Where are you from? I said, Austin, Texas. He shrugged and said, I should have known. Back to the desk clerk. Still no calls. Then, what's your name? Uh, Answer, Jim Valentine. Why didn't you say so? Mac told me to call you when you showed up. In the late spring, 1940, the band played the dancing campus at the New York World's Fair with the June Krupa Band on a dual bandstand featuring vocalists Dick Hames and Anita O'Day. New Orleans jazz great Benny Carter came over and introduced himself. I liked him very much. Also, Madame Chiang Kai-shek 
her sister and brother-in-law, the UN ambassador for that China, came and danced many nights. People came from all over. Recently in Austin at a reception, a man a little younger than me came over and introduced himself as a former contemporary at UT and reminded me that we had talked at the dancing campus some 60 plus years ago. I have to confess, I didn't remember this. Bob Everly, he preferred the Y ending, had an exceptional baritone voice, most evident when he sang without a mic on the floor show at dances. He was most gracious in recalling in a metronome interview Jim Valentine singing had pleased the girls at UT. He had a quick sense of humor. For example, about the Piccadilly, he said, the rooms were so small, every time you turned over in bed, it flushed the toilet. I remember one especially enjoyable job, the Rich Carlton roof in Boston. The younger Roosevelt son was there with the party several nights. At the long intermission, the hotel's fine buffet in the opulent, to me, musician's lounge for the band. In the winter of 1940, we did about a month at the Biltmore Hotel's Bowman Room in New York. College students would meet under the clock at the Biltmore. They set up a little floor show after intermission. I was doing Danny Boy in a slow, emotional way on Thanksgiving Day. Got to thinking about Texas University beating Texas A&M, which was headed for the national championship that day, and started laughing in the middle. I just couldn't stop. Bradley stopped the band, and I finally gained control and explained why I'd started laughing and got started again. And I got the biggest hand I'd gotten so far at the Biltmore. A&M was defeated. I believe Texas had won only one game at the beginning of the year. Notre Dame, six to nothing. <laughs> I never met Frank Sinatra. He had just left Harry James and joined Tommy Dorsey. We both sang with these bands at the Harvest Moon Ball, a big New York charity held, I think, at Madison Square Garden. In the post-war 50s, watching TV one night, Sinatra was reminiscing with Ella Fitzgerald. I wonder what happened to Jimmy Valentine. She said, that's a good question. That's the only connection I ever had about with Frank Sinatra. I did hear him at the New York Paramount, along with lots of Bobby Sockers. But little did I dream I'd be on the same stage a few months later for five weeks with Dinah Shore. That's how I got to know Dinah Shore, a really charming person from Nashville, Tennessee. The band shows done on the old orchestra pit converted to a stage were very popular. Over one holiday, we did seven shows, the first at 8 a.m. and the last at 1.30 the next morning. Though New Yorkers in the mass sometimes seem standoffish, I found that Piccadilly was sort of like a friendly small town set at the crossroads of show business. Frequently, Victor Mature was in the drugstore for a snack or coffee. Jack Benny would buy his cigars from his old friend Doc. Occasionally, I'd run into Zachary Scott, whom I'd known in Austin, at the circus bar where the Three Sons Trio were perennially popular. Ray tells me that night is the closing night at the famous door on 52nd Street. He wants me to sing How High the Moon, which I'd never sung before, on the NBC radio spot that night. It went very well. These nights were special, I found. Lots of luminaries were there. Charlie Barnett, Red Nichols, Donna Shore, Ella Fitzgerald, Bob Crosby, Les Brown. Ellen O'Connell sat next to me. On the other side was George T. Simon, 
the editor of Metronome Magazine. We later became good friends, meeting several times in Austin and New York City over the post-war years. The following day was a recording date at Columbia Records. They handed me the sheets on A Young Man Sings, enlightening me that it's Tony Martin's theme song and Polka Dots and Moonbeams, two numbers I'd never sung before. Somehow we did them, but I'm no Tony Martin. They didn't introduce me to those in the control room, but I knew that John Hammond was the producer. I found out later, 60 years in fact, that Mitch Miller had also been. It's a fascinating CD, great music, great oral history. And Jimmy is just a wonderful guy. He came into the Austin History Center to give this to me last week. He's now 87 and uh, still going strong and uh, selling these records. This CD is available from Waterloo Records and Now's Drugs on West Lynn. So remember, if you like Sinatra and Bing, then you'll love Jimmy Valentine. For, for more information on him, you can go to www.cdfromlp.ca for more information. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this show. Until next week, same time, same place, I'm Tim Hamblin, and I am History. Coming to the show.